All right, and we will see. It says we're live, so let me just make sure. You know how you can never tell with these things. That's just what we were talking about. Okay, good, we are live. Great, awesome, fantastic. So hello, everyone, we're live. And there are a couple people watching on Facebook. As I always say, you're more than welcome to join us via the Zoom. Bob, that's the best way to get the full experience, to get to know Don and Cindy, to network, to get to know one another. You all pick this uh, topic today. The topic is advertising. We've gone over advertising before, but this one I um, have narrowed it down. Be um, narrowed it down even more, and I don't think you can talk advertising en enough. Where we're going to actually talk seven types of advertising to promote your small business effectively, and then hopefully we'll have time to actually where we'll go into talking about some tips for small business, and then from there, if we have additional time, we'll show some examples to that as well so it, we have a lot to cover so as always feel free to stop me ask questions we want this to be interactive but um i think this will be a good one because as always you know advertising is really important for small businesses but as we always say in these free marketing workshops that as the business owner you have to decide what is best for you right is advertising best for you i don't know that's up to you to decide do you have money in your budget to spend for advertising. That's really up to you to decide and to tell if that is something that works for you within your budget. We know advertising works, right? You're spending money, you're doing, you know, you're going above and beyond. It's different than just posting on Instagram or whatnot. You're actually spending the money. So of course it's going to work better than just not spending money. Although let's as we know, organic marketing is the number one way to market, and that doesn't cost you a penny. That does not cost you a penny. But we'll get into the seven types of advertising right now to promote small businesses. From there, we'll talk about the tips, and then hopefully we'll have the chance to really delve into some of the examples that we have. So there really are, there's actually, a I, when I was re researching this, there's really dozens and dozens of ways that you can advertise your product or service or whatever it is your small business is. There's everything from advertising on a, at a marquee at your local, you know, movie theater to posting in a newspaper to sponsoring a 5k and everything in between. There's so many different ways to advertise your small businesses. So we're going to high level talk about the seven types of them, but Small businesses need to choose the advertising that works best for them, right? That works best for their budget, that makes sense for their business model, that's going to really attract and hit their customer avatar. Um, because we know that advertising does work if it's done the right way, if it's done the right way. So we're gonna start out with social media advertising. So social media advertising is obviously the most popular choice for small businesses. I think that goes without saying. Um, that's because it's really cheap. Social media advertising is very inexpensive and you can highly select your demographics. So if any of you have, have any, have either of you guys um, done, I think Cindy, you said that it was pop, you actually had some luck with it, correct? Oh, I had a lot of luck this past week. With your social media ads? Yes. Facebook ads. Yeah. What did you do that? What, how, what happened? Tell us. About I, well, I, you know, my niche is very narrow. So I, I chose that and added in a couple other things like maybe, um, I think I chose financials and education. And then I went in, I went all in for a week for $20 a day and spent just about that much. Um, I grew my email list from mm, 25, I think, to almost 80. Wow, so you t you um, three times your email list. Yeah, Triple. and my, my group was at like 35, and now it's just over 100. Wow. I'm still two, two likes before I on my page to reach a hundred. I got ninety-eight. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're almost there. You're there. You're this close. And that was all you attributing all of that to your social media. And that was all Facebook advertising. That was all yeah, I think it, well maybe some Instagram, but 
I think mostly Facebook. Wow. And um, yeah, that, well, some of it was word of mouth because I know somebody who came in and then she, you know, told a couple of her friends and they came in. But for the most part, it was, uh, yeah, it was from advertising. I was going to place an ad because I'm launching today. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. so I was going to place an ad for this coming week, but I thought, you know, let me send out these emails first and see what kind, you know, the, the launch email and see what kind of a result I get. If I don't get much, then, you know, then I'll, of course, I'll place another ad. And how much total did you spend? A hundred dollars? No, I spent a hundred and forty, I think. That's still pretty good to, you know, yeah. three times the amount of audience followers that you got. So that's fantastic. So we know, I mean, because you hit your demographics, you get to pick who you want to see the ads. So it's very, Facebook makes it very easy because you can just go in and pick exactly what you said. So you can put in those, those keywords, you can pick exactly who you want to see. Um, and based on your budget, it tells you how many people approximately are going to see the ads. So that's fantastic. And clearly Cindy just proved that it worked. So that's fantastic. Um, and if there's anybody who's, and there are people watching um, on the Facebook Live, obviously you're more than welcome to join us via the Zoom. Otherwise, just put your comments in the comments below um, as well. So um, I see Whitney is watching as well. So that's great, Whitney. Thank you for joining us. Let me mute myself so I don't hear me, double hear me in this as well. Okay, so um, anyways. So the biggest social media advertising is Facebook, of course. Facebook is sort of everything social media. And it's a great advertising choice for the small businesses, as Cindy said, because it adapts to everything that you need, as Cindy just said. It tells you you can pick your demographics, you can pick your keywords, um, and the platform really is, for the most part, relatively low cost. As Cindy said, $140, but she got three times the amount of people in her group. And she got, you know, what was it? Almost three times the amount of emails as well, which is fantastic. So almost 70% of American adults use Facebook, not a big surprise. And among those who use it, nearly 75% log into the service at least once a day. So there are different ad units to choose from on Facebook, including video ads, customer offers, carousel images, lead generation, page likes, event responses, and more. And the easy, the best thing about it, oh, sorry, John, just once, the best thing about it is they have face, if you have a Facebook business page, they have this Facebook business site now where you go behind, you go into that Facebook business site and they actually kind of walk you through everything and tell you it's all your analytics and everything. Yes, Tom. What's the difference between advertise, uh, social media advertising and boosting? And boost, okay. So boosting is just basically you're paying for a ad or I'm sorry, for a status of yours, like you update, like an update, right? Just like an update. So you just went in and you posted an update. You're boosting that for more people to see. So it's not as specific, if you will. Yes, go ahead, Cindy, as well. I've boosted posts in the past and they didn't get this. I mean, they did well, but they didn't get this kind of reach. That's the difference. You're, they're cheap. They're cheaper and they're not as targeted, but you still can, I mean, they still can work, right? I mean, if you have a very good, like for instance, if you have a, I've boosted ads before as well. Like if I have events that are happening, instead of paying more for an ad, I'll just boost it, but they're not as specific as the ads are. So if you're gonna spend, to me, if you're gonna spend the money, like spend the money on, the, like the ads to me are worth it. Because like Cindy said, you can get very, very specific with the, with specific with the ads. Instagram is obviously another way. Um, Instagram is a great option as well. Um, Instagram is very visual, as you all know. So, and it appeals to younger audiences. So this might not be the best option for everybody, Don. This might, this might not be the best option for either of you guys, to be honest, um, because most of their users are under the age of 30. Um, but it has the same targeting perimeters as Facebook does. So if you go in and buy an ad on Instagram, it does have the same 
parameters as Facebook. So you can go in and pick and choose. And actually, Cindy, now that I think about it, you may have some young people, some young widows who you may want to get in front of that maybe you haven't targeted yet. And Instagram would be really the place to do it. And you can do the exact same thing that you did on Facebook with carousels, videos, stories, posts, however you want to do it. You can also do a clear call to action, which I highly recommend on every ad that you do, you do a call to action, whether that be, you know, comment here for 10% discount. So you can, you know, or I don't know, Cindy, what did you do to grab their email? I'd be curious to see what your call to action was. Well, I don't think you can do an ad that leads directly to a group. And I was doing it from my page because my group is private. So what I did was I, um, I had a graphic, you know, I can't even remember what it was, but, and underneath it said, um, are you a widow? And that's what people responded to the most, answering yes. But anyway, the, the ad itself, had, you click on it, it took you to my website, which had a redirect back to my Facebook group. And on the, on the redirect, I said, if you don't want to leave your email, that's fine. Just click this button. So that, but the vast majority of people did. Okay. So that was a call to action, either leave your email or click this button. So call to actions are critical. And no matter what you do, call to actions are super important. So, you know, that's in any ad, I would say, do a call to action. And then the third um, what the, one that they talk about for social media is LinkedIn, which we're talking more and more about LinkedIn. LinkedIn advertising trends tend to be a bit more expensive. I've done a LinkedIn ad and I will tell you it was very expensive. It kind of blew my mind away at how expensive it was um, compared to all the other ads. I was not, ex I mean, we're talking almost a thousand dollars it was for an ad. And I did not get any return on it, nothing, no, nothing back from it. So I, I'm not saying that they don't work at all. I'm not saying that clearly LinkedIn ads work. Um, otherwise it wouldn't be on here. It wouldn't be an example. Be smart, do your research. There's over 560 active professional users. That's gotta be wrong. Be, um, that's way, there's way more than 560 active professional users on LinkedIn. Um, there's millions of users on LinkedIn, um, but it's more of a B2B model, right? So I, again, I spent almost at the, I was very, you know, when I got the bill and saw it and it didn't pay off for me. I'm not saying it doesn't, won't work, doesn't work, but um, it's a good option for smaller B2B models. So if Daniel was on here, I would tell him LinkedIn might be a good model for him to look at and study and see if that's something that he can target specific business industries in with certain job titles. That's what LinkedIn is for. I never will. I'm not going to use LinkedIn again. It just, it, it was expensive and it didn't work for me. Um, I don't think Don or Cindy that either of you should even think about LinkedIn, quite frankly. <laughs> I think uh, social media, Instagram and Facebook is perfect for you all, believe me. Um, okay, number two is pay-per-click advertising, which we all know about. PPC advertising is the type of online advertising where advertisers pay a fee every time a user clicks on one of their ads, usually through a search engine, right? Advertisers bid on ad placements within the search engine meaning they set a maximum price. So I've done this on Google. They're willing to pay for a user to click on their ad. So you go to Google and you say this, okay, Google, I have $200 I, I have to pay or to spend whatever, get me as many clicks per um, pay-per-clicks that you can. And sometimes it... Uh, so for me, it worked to get people to, it definitely drew a ton of people to my um, website, but I didn't necessarily get a lot of clients from that. But that, again, it drew people, it uh, made uh, people aware of my business. You don't get, you don't get charged anything if they just look at you, read your description. All, they actually have to click, click it, right? So if they just, if they see your ad, if they see what you're, you know, promoting, doesn't cost you a cent. It's until they click into your ad and that takes you to your website, 
that they, you get charged, that you actually, your money starts going away. So again, the most common are Google ads that you see a lot of the time on side or, you know, above banners or side ads. Um, and those are, again, targeted based on who you want to reach. Um, PPC advertising is a form of search engine marketing, SEM, which you might hear it called SEM. And it's a great option for small businesses with limited budgets because this is what it says. I Again, it didn't necessarily work for me, but I'm not the all, end all be all by any means. They say that businesses make on average $2 revenue for every dollar they spend on Google ads. So you're getting double your money back on Google ads. It's just, you make the ad and then again, you don't get charged for anything until they click into your website or click into a different web landing page that if it has like, for instance, if you're teaching a master class or you're teaching some site type of an event, Cindy, for your group, you build out maybe another landing page and that's where you want them to go versus your actual website. So that's what you would build out. That's what you would have them click to instead of like your actual landing page. Um, but you don't get charged anything, nothing, unless they actually click in it and that's where the dollars start ticking down. Questions on that? It's relatively inexpensive. Again, I got a ton of, follow, of new people to my website. I just didn't get any really new clients from that. I have gotten the majority of my clients through LinkedIn, to be honest, not even advertising, just word of mouth. That's why I'm such a huge advocate for word of mouth and networking and organic marketing. It's just, to me, that's, I'm a huge advocate for that. Where it, It's free, it works. And um, it's how I've gotten pretty much all my clients. Number three is mobile advertising. Mobile advertising is a type of digital advertising in which ads are served only on mobile devices, including smartphones and tablets. So this can include basically what we just talked about before, but they're really only on your cell phones or your iPads. So mobile display ads, search ads, mobile videos, mobile app ads, which are meant to drive downloads to your brand's app if you have an app. Social media ads served on mobile devices only, which is another option that you can do. Having a mobile advertising strategy can pay off for small businesses. 84% of adult customers under the age of 30 are most likely to shop on a mobile device, which is why we always say that no matter what you create, whether it's your website, if it's an ad, whatever it is that you create, you really want to make that mobile friendly, right? You really want to make it so, yeah, if they click into it, it goes into the ad and the ad is mobile friendly. They click into it and the website is mobile friendly. Whatever it is that you create, that's mo it's got to be mobile friendly. Because like it said, 84% of adult customers, they're only checking you out on their phone. Like probably in a coffee shop or maybe when, you know, they're in, in the subway or something at work on lunch, something along the lines of that. So it's critical that whatever you create, whatever ad you create is mobile friendly. And again, there are the options where you just do it via mobile advertising. I've never done that. So I couldn't tell you what the prices of it are, but I would assume they're cheaper than just sort of the online advertising. Okay, now we're starting to get into some, some of the older advertising that sort of everybody, not older, but what we're more used to advertising, print advertising, print advertising. Print advertising used to be the primary advertising type before social media came around. So before digital advertising, I should say, come around. Print ad revenues are shrinking. And as a small business owner, you might find the cost is a lot higher than the cost of digital and social advertising. It's also more difficult to measure the success of your print advertising campaign. I think that's really important to say is that you have analytics almost immediately when you have ads that are online. Cindy, did you, did you get your analytics pretty quickly from your ads? Actually, no, it kept <laughs> saying, it, it still says, um... I have to check it again today because it ended at midnight. Um, but it was saying not enough data. <laughs> really, that's interesting. Yeah. Huh. But I think I think maybe it was it was waiting till the end of the ad cycle. I don't know. 
It might, it might, because you still could get more people. Yeah. So that that's very well true because it is, I do know from my print advertising, that's one of the best things about it is the analytics. So, you know, like, who's looking at your, you know, you put in a range and then you're like, oh, out of the 20 to 40 year old, it's all 25 and below that are looking at my stuff. So you don't necessarily get that with print advertising anymore. It's just, it's hard to have that analytics. So, however, um, some, some businesses target sort of the older generation and less digitally engaged. So that's why print advertising is a good, I still think print advertising works when it needs to work, right? It's a good choice depending on who your target audience is, particularly if you're a very locally based business. If you're a brick and mortar, locally based, print advertising works. It does. And there's a lot of places that you can print advertise. We're not just talking about newspapers here. There's tons of ways you can do it. You can do it in like a church bulletin. You can do it in sports. You know, they have um, it like sports events. They have the programs that you can do for sports events. There's lots of ways that you can do sport or print advertising. It's just a matter of getting creative and doing it. And I, it does work, particularly if you are very local. Um, so again, it says newspaper ads, magazine ads, ads and brochures and flyers. They're very, very popular. Don, have you done any of these types of advertising yet? No? Okay. Just curious. Um, broadcast advertising. This is where the money, you know, most small businesses don't really have a lot of money for broadcast advertising. However, there are ways that you can be creative about this. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Broadcast advertising usually includes media market, TV, and radio. So TV ads can typically be cost prohibitive for small businesses. If you have local TV and radio stations near you, the cost might be more affordable and the audience could be highly relevant to your local businesses. See, I don't necessarily believe that. I what I've gotten when I've gotten quotes from TV stations, they're usually pretty high. Here's how you can get on a TV station that's still considered advertising for much lower. You go back to that organic marketing, right? So you pitch the media about doing an interview or having a um, an um, some sort of a story based on what you are doing, particularly for things like. Like we have here, Good Morning Atlanta. They're always looking for news stories that aren't even really hard news stories. They're always looking for people to interview. That is a great way to get your news story out there without paying for anything. And it's longer. You're not looking at a 30 second, um, inter or 30 second commercial. You're looking at a two to four minute interview with the website at the bottom. You can wear a shirt if you want to that has your logo on it. You know, they they usually put it on your their website afterwards. So getting creative with TV is the way that we have to be now. And that's things like pitching ourselves, pitching our stories to the local media, telling them why they would why they want to cover us, right? And it may be something as simple as looking at, you know, um, I'm thinking, Cindy, something like for you, if there's a Memorial Day sort of, you know, that they may want to interview you for, or Don, if there's a month or a day that's really focused on nutrition, or not even just as a brand new local business, you know, business, like local TV stations love local businesses. And so just getting out there and pitching yourself and, feeling comfortable on TV and saying like, we'll show you a couple of exercises. We'll share a recipe with you, something along the line that makes it interactive. They love that. Or if you are a part of an event that they show up at, getting on the TV for that, getting an interview for that. Anytime that you can get your business name on TV or radio is a win, especially if it costs you nothing because the advertising, the broadcast advertising is extremely expensive. And honestly, you know, where, when you want it to air, like the six o'clock news, the five, six o'clock news, the primetime TV shows, those are where it gets very expensive. And it's almost like you can't even afford it, to be honest. Small businesses, it's, it's ridiculous. So you have to be creative and getting other ways in front of those TV stations. And that's how you do it. Pitching your stories 
getting interviews with them, particularly, like I said, those, those morning shows, like the ones that are from like nine to 12, those are always, they're always looking for interviews and stories. So just watch what they're doing and follow them. And Twitter is a great way to reach. If nothing else, Twitter is a great way to reach reporters. I have to say that that's how I've re reached all of the reporters I've ever needed for stories for my clients has been through Twitter. So, um, that's a good way to reach them just because they get so many press releases that land on their desk so many times. So broadcast advertising is a way, but it does get expensive. Out of home, number six, out of home advertising. Out of home outdoor advertising refers to advertising that reaches people when they're outside the home. Makes sense. So this includes things like billboards, um, digital signage, transit ads, like if you're at a bus stop and you're waiting, you know, they have the ads on the side of it, um, train ads, subway stops, even inside subways, they have those on the sides of buses, they have ads. So street furniture ads, sports venue ads. Um, and we're not talking like the Buffalo Bills ads. We're talking about like maybe, you know, your little league ad, like the little league, um, diamonds you know how they have like little ads around there those are very very inexpensive and here's the other thing about those ads it looks really good for the community it looks like you're giving back to the community and people your neighbors your community loves that and as a result they embrace that even more so saying like okay i'm going to sponsor the local little league baseball team or the little football team the sixth grade football team by i don't know you know giving them 500 bucks for the year. And then you are like a gold sponsor. You're in every brochure, every program you're mentioned at every game, you know, you're like, you're honored at every game. I mean, like that's people. And then your community loves, you. they're like this, look at like, look at what Tom's doing for our community. He's like 500. They don't know how much you gave. Like, you know, they're, he's sponsoring, he's paying it forward to our little kids, these football players. Like they love that. So things like that, any out, out of home advertising, not necessarily, I mean, we know billboards, billboards definitely if they're strategically placed work, we know that they're, they can be very expensive, but so can smaller little, you know, ads in football stadiums or little baseball um, diamonds or, you know, any anything that you can support that's like for, you know, the smaller, smaller community outreach organizations, it's a big deal for um, local communities. So that's always worth looking at and saying like, okay, do I have a couple hundred dollars to, A, it gets my name out there a, a lot, but B, it also looks like I'm a good neighbor. And that's something that really, you can't really put a price tag on that because so many people are see that and they're like, wow, look at what Don is doing for the community. Like, that's awesome. We, we're gonna talk to him about what he's doing First, we're going to thank him for being this awesome neighbor. And then we're going to just start talking to him about like what his business is all about. So that's a good thing. Um, so obviously there's tons of places that you can do that. If you're interested in looking at any of the outdoor, like, you know, bus stops, shelter, any of those bus shelters, the subway station, they're always usually run by one community or one company. Um, and so it's just a matter of reaching out to them and getting, um, a, they have like a packet that tells you what all the prices are. I will tell you they're not cheap and you have to design the artwork, obviously yourself. It's got to be high quality. So it's for small businesses. If you're going to do outside the home, it's better to do it for like smaller local organizations. And then finally, direct mail advertising. You you both especially know with um, Janice and Michael and Brenda in our classes, this is what they do. They do direct mail advertising. And so they've spoken on our Thursday Thoughts. You've heard them speak about the importance of direct mail advertising, sending those cards out, just saying, thank you for being a client. Thank you for participating in a class. You know, happy birthday, happy anniversary, whatever it is. Sympathy, Cindy, you've thought, you asked about sympathy cards one time. Um, and so direct mail advertising comes in tons of forms. It comes in mailers that you can send out just advertising what your business is saying, okay, this is who we are. This is what we do. Here's a 10% coupon off on it. If you know, send in your email, get this 10% coupon off of those to the cards that we were talking about before. Just remember cards 
thanking, following up with potential clients or the clients that you already have. Super, super important. Direct mail ads enable you to deliver your message one-on-one -on -one to local consumers. So they're saying, this says that direct mail is less popular. I'll be honest, I get direct mail pieces in the mail every single day still. I don't necessarily think that it's a less popular um, way to market your business at all, by any means, to advertise your business. I'm still getting them every day from everything from my dentist to real estate to you know garbage pickup and everything in between. So direct mail, it's not cheap, but if you know if you want to do mass, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to do mass mailings, they're not cheap. However, if you do something like what um, Brenda and Mike and Janice do, you know, and you become like their subscriber and you send out for their birthdays and whatnot, that those aren't super expensive. And that's a way to just show your um, clients like that you're grateful for them. And I think that that really says, that really says a lot. Questions on that before we jump into tips on how we really make sure that we're hitting the right, the right audience. Okay. So a few tips now for advertising tips for small businesses. Number one, obviously you have to target the right audience, right? You have to make sure that you are hitting the right audience. That's the best way to maximize your, maximize your budget and spend your ads dollars efficiently is to make sure that you're reaching the target audience that you want. It sounded like Cindy absolutely did that when she did her social media ads. She got both of them and the emails and the people who joined her group three times the amount of people that she hit the right audience. She knew who she knew the target, the words that she had to put in. She knew, you know, what words am I going to target? Okay. I know what words I'm targeting. Maybe I'll put in a couple words here and we'll see what happens with them. She tried a few words, but she knew her key words that she was going to put in to target that audience. It worked. So typically what you should do is know who your target audience is, right? Profile your target audience, right? Figure out who they are. Are they, you know, 20 year old fit girls? Are they, you know, are they, who, who is your target? What's your target avatar? And from there, you build that customer base and you put in those keywords that are going to attract them. You can survey your existing customer base. That's a really good way to actually figure out who your social media followers are. Ask them, ask them questions, put a, put a survey out there. People love answering those questions. That's one of the best things you can do on Facebook and Instagram. Tell me a little bit about you. You know, what's your age? Um, you know, where do you live? How often do you work out? What's your favorite way of working out? Do you, you know, all that good stuff. You can ask them a lot of questions. And again, analytics tells you a lot of what you want to know about your audience already, both on Facebook and on Instagram. Okay, so once you have a demographic profile of your target audience, choose the advertising platform that works best for them. And we know Cindy did that. We know she hit Facebook up and it worked. And it's still, it's, it sounds like your ads are still running or they haven't closed quite yet because you would get the analytics, correct? It, it closed at midnight last or midnight today, whatever. Okay. And um, I just haven't had a chance to look at it again today. Yeah. And it usually takes a little bit for them to like compile everything and get it all to you anyways. So yeah, probably by tonight or tomorrow, you'll have like a full report of everything. So that's great. Advertise, number two, advertise where your audience is. Now that you understand who your target audience, do your research on the various ad platforms we just talked about and make sure that your advertisement will reach them, right? So do you have an older audience that really isn't on Facebook and Instagram? Okay, then don't do digital advertising, right? Maybe you do some more of that traditional advertising in the newspaper or in flyers or some of that, um, you know, out of the house advertising that we talked about on billboards or in the community outreach events. Know where your audience is and hit them up where they are, right? For example, if your target consumer is under 21 years old, mobile advertising through Snapchat might be a great choice. 
If you're considering print broadcast or outdoor advertising, request a media kit before purchasing ad space to make sure the demographics make sense for your target. So again, the outdoor space advertising is very, very expensive when you're looking at billboards and subways and bus stops and all of that good stuff. But when we're looking at those community outreach, you know, baseball games, football games, all of that stuff, you can pretty much tell who the target audience is as though it is at those. It's families, it's grandmas, it's grandpas, it's parents, it's little kids. If that's who you want to target, that's the perfect place for you then to make an ad and get it in front of them. And again, all year, a lot of times that's like 500 bucks max. So the, again, I highly recommend that if, if you are a brick and mortar, if you want to be seen in your community, those are great ways to do it. And we're getting into the school year, you know, we're already in August here. Track and measure success. This is super important. It's important that you evaluate the performance of your advertising campaign so you can make informed decisions about what your future advertising is going to look like, right? Was it a waste of money? Did you spend money that you were like, I got no return on investment, zero? Like that's what happened with me with LinkedIn. It was, I did not do my research before and I ended up spending almost $1,000 for nothing. And that was frustrating. And so really do some research before and figure out where your money is going to get the biggest bang for its buck. And then track and measure that success as you go along. Obviously, Cindy's huge success. We know that. She had a huge success with hers. So listen, in a couple of months, she knows she might want to do that exact same advertisement again because it worked. Why wouldn't you? Like, why reinvent the wheel? Go back and do the exact same thing. Um, so it says digital ads make it easy to track the success of your efforts and your paper click ad platforms give you detailed reports exactly on how much you spend, how efficiently you spend, your budget, the best performing ad creative, and the demographics of the people you engage with. So that's really important. Every single one of those are really, really important to know, right? Who is coming to your ad? Who's actually spending time looking at your ad? Who's clicking on your ad? Who's going to your website? Who's going to that additional page that might not be your website, that might be, you know, a masterclass or something that you're teaching or just a, um, a landing page that just has more information about you. All of that is really important. And that actually says this, consider using a unique URL, email address, or phone number in those ads so you can see how much interest they generate, which is such a great idea. So just have a different URL, like a link off of your website, or, and that's very, very easy to build in, very easy to build in, or get a different email, a separate email for just that ad or a separate phone number. Not, I wouldn't suggest a phone number, but a URL or email address. And then you can see specifically the only place I use this URL, URL, and this email address was on this ad. So every person coming to these, the only way they found out about it was through this ad. So I know it's either a success or not. If you use a unique code, which a lot of people do, you'll see like get 10% off, use the code, you know, small bays or whatever. That's another great way to track how your ads worked. That's a great, and a lot of people in my Thursday thought to do that. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. They'll say like use small business or Facebook group small business and you'll get 10% off. That's the way for the people who are talking in my Thursday thoughts to really measure how many people came from this group, um, might came from our group to see, you know, if it worked, if they got anyone, if they got how many people they got from our group to see um, who really are using their, their products. So that's another really smart way to track your advertisements as well. Questions on that? Okay, number four, get the timing right. If you don't have the budget to advertise all year long, it's best to run your ad campaigns during the most effective times of the year. Study your business earnings and identify your busiest seasons. So listen, most people would say Christmas or the holidays are the busiest seasons, right? That's not always the case, right? 
for Don, I would say probably a lot of people want to get healthy before summer or before, you know, they go on a big trip or something like that. Cindy, yours are all over the place. You don't have, you don't necessarily have a specific time. I mean, that's just the reality of it. So, you know, but look and see if maybe there is a month that tends to be a little bit, you make a little bit more money, then maybe that's the time that you want to advertise right before, because you know, this is our busy time of year, right? This is our busy time of year. We want to grab them in. So understanding if there is, it says, like this says, maybe if you're a retail business, your peak season is during the December holiday. Or if you run a landscaping business, you're probably busiest during spring or summer. Advertising during the time of year when you, people are most likely to pay for your product and services can, in can increase your return on investment. I mean, I think that obviously makes sense. But again, with some businesses, it's not that easy. It's not that black and white to say like, okay, this is when, our, when we're our busiest time of year. You can go back, you can look at your books, you can see like, okay, this is this makes sense based on what we, were, we did last year. But I think a lot of it, especially if you're just starting out, is just kind of like looking, learning and trying just like what Cindy did. And it worked. Being smart, being strategic with those words that you put out there, the demographics, that's very important. Number five out of five, try remarketing re strategies. Remarketing is relevant for most forms of digital advertising. It involves targeting your ads at people who have visited your website before but have not converted to paying customers. So you can create highly personalized ads to engage with these users based on what they viewed in your website. So you go, you kind of look at your website. What have people been spending time on in my website? Oh, they're spending most time on this page, reading about this, looking at these, all that good stuff. Then you create ba ads based on that. These ads will then be more relevant to the customer and will and with engaging copy or a discount offer that you can hopefully convince that person to actually buy now instead of just looking at that page. So really understanding your website and knowing the analytics. And hopefully, I know, Don, you're in the process of build, still building and working on yours. And Cindy, I hope hopefully you look at the analytics of your websites every once in a while and just see like, okay, this page has gotten a lot more traction lately than this page, all that good stuff. Um, because I think that that is knowing the analytics of your social media pages and your website pages are critical because they can really tell you so much. And then you can base everything around that. You can base your advertising around that. You can base um, wh wh when you post, where you post, your messaging. Um, you can put, you know, keywords, all of that good stuff. So there's a lot that you can, you know, base based on your analytics. So if you're not looking at your analytics, definitely do, because they tell you a lot of good things. Questions real quick. I'm going to go really quickly because, you know, I love stats. I'm just going to tell you a couple of quick stats really quickly before I show you a couple of um, really interesting small business um, examples that I want to show you really quick. So videos are shared. We talk about videos so much. Um, videos are shared 1200% more than text and links combined. So I don't know how much I can stress the importance y'all of videos, like video, video, video. That's what people want. That's why TikTok is killing it. That's why Instagram and Facebook are both switching to make almost, they're trying to be TikTok, quite frankly. Um, so videos are critical, critical. This one I thought was interesting. About 81% of all online shopping carts are abandoned. Advertising fast facts indicate that customers are indeed hasty to abandon their online shopping carts. This is a big issue for online businesses since a total of 81% of users never return to finish shopping after they initially abandoned their cart. To tackle this problem and reduce this number of abandoned baskets, you might want to look back into some tried and true abandonment issues. And there are a ton of them. So if you want, you want to spend some time, just write that down, abandonment solutions, and go back if you have time and look at that because there is a lot of 
tools and tips to kind of help grab those people who are not following through. Because obviously that's a lot. That's a huge amount of people. 90% of searchers haven't, have not made up their mind about a brand before starting their search. So that's, that's huge. Um, small businesses earn an average of $3 in revenue for every $1.60 they spend on Google ads. 90% of consumers read online reviews before visiting a business. That is why when we talk about online reviews and testimonials, critical. I'll tell you, I don't even go, I don't stay at a hotel until I read reviews. I don't go to a restaurant until I read reviews. Like reviews are, I'm a huge Yelp person and TripAdvisor, particularly when I'm traveling. So those are super important. Even if you have one, one review saying that you're, how awesome you are, that weighs so much more than having none. So that's really, really, really important. Um, three quarters of marketers fail to use behavioral data for online ad targeting. So that's, again, talking about looking at your analytics, following it through, figuring out what your end user, your buyers are doing, and really making ads, making statements, doing everything to really pertain to them because then they're more likely to buy from you. And that's obviously what you want. 84% um, of consumers expect, expect brands to create content. So if you're not, you really, really need to be. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's any more. 4.62 billion people used social media in 2021, up from 4.8% up 4 the year before. That means 62% of all people on the planet now use social media. Like that's insane to me. All people on the planet, over half people on the planet use social media, which means you got to start, if you're not active on social media, as active as you should be, you really, really need to be advertising, posting constantly, like a lot. So, you know, doing reels, doing stories, doing carousels, posting facts. And you're posting things where they can learn. What does it mean for them, right? What are they getting out of it? That's what they want to see. They don't want to see, you know, just anything. They want to see you giving them information that they're going to learn from, that they're going to get in, gather from, that they're going to, it's meaningful to them, I guess, versus just, you know, jargon, as I like to say. Um, the average engagement rate of Instagram businesses account posts in 2021 was 0.83%. So that's 90% of users follow at least one business on Instagram, while more than 200 million people visit at least one business profile every day. So, I mean, I guess, again, what are we saying? That if you're not on the social media bus, like it's time. It really, it's really, really time. So I found this that just had a really, um, just had a bunch of really good ideas of things. And I'm just going to run down it really quick. Very inexpensive ways for small businesses to advertise before I jump really quickly into a couple of um, examples for you guys. So sponsoring a radio contest or giveaway. So we had talked about that is, you know, again, you're not, you're on the radio, but you're not paying for an ad. You're still getting your name out there, which is pretty cool. Um, advertise at lo local movie theaters. Like I know where I'm from, the movie theater, they don't really have a lot of money. They're actually a nonprofit. So um, they, they're always looking for people to help. So that's a great way if you have um, a movie theater that might be an older movie theater that you could help support. Sponsoring a trade show or industry event, particularly Cindy, I'm thinking with you because I know there's trade shows and events that um, are around your industry for sure. For, obviously, if they're they're digital, that would be the one that the ones that would save money. Um, let me see where else are some interesting ones here for you. Sponsoring an online contest or giveaway. So I just did that yesterday with our YouTube channel. So for a week, I was, you know, or a little over a week, I was really promoting. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can win a hundred bucks. Wasn't much, but you know, we got, I started out with, I think we had 15 YouTube users. I have 126 now. 
So that worked, right? For a hundred dollars. And that cost me a hundred dollars. So I'm pretty happy with that. And it cost me, like I said, it was a hundred dollars and it got, people love contests. And it's, like I said, it's not a ton of money, but it's a hundred dollars. So especially with gas and everything that works, um, you can always start an email newsletter. A lot of people do newsletters, advertising on Facebook, creating YouTube ads, LinkedIn ads, which again, I'm not a huge advocate for. Organic marketing is huge. So next week I'm having that networking event in our group for the very first time. Try to come to that if you guys can. That's going to be huge. Networking is by far the number one best way to market your product. Even if you can pop in and pop out just to say, hi, here's who I am, meet some new people and leave. Um, networking is a huge way to talk, let other people know about your business, what you do, and then meet, maybe meet people who can use your business or vice versa. Um, Podcasts are great. I, I know, Cindy, you've been getting on a lot of podcasts lately. I'm actually doing a podcast this week. I did one last week, and I love podcasts. So if you can get on a podcast, get on a podcast. They're such a great way to market your service, your business, your item, whatever you do. They're fun. And so look for people to get on a podcast or start following podcasters. Um and then the next thing you know, they're going to ask you. That's how I got my podcasters. I just started following them. Cindy, how did you start getting on yours? Um, well, I have several groups that I'm in where people are either looking to host, or, you know, they're looking to be on one or they're looking for guests. And so I found a lot of them that way. And I found a couple that have branched out into other, you know, word of mouth kind of things. I don't know if I can pull it up, but I've got a, I've got a spreadsheet because I had to start keeping track. Love it. My first one airs, the first one I've recorded airs today, as a matter of fact. That's awesome. So, yeah. And it's and, all through networking, quite frankly, then what you said was all, you were part of groups, you met people, they start met people, it's all networking. So yeah, that's what I cannot emphasize enough how important networking is. It's critical. Yeah, there's a there's a um, group that does weekly, I think it's weekly met, um, networking, where you just take your turn and you go on and you say what you do and whether you're looking to host or or be a whether you're looking for guests or to be a guest, and it's pretty cool. That's how I found a couple of them. That's awesome. Well, if or you're actually, they it, found me. I love that. Well, if you remember, put it in the comments below, because that might be great for the people in our group as well to see that. And like I said, I am starting, I'm trying this networking thing with our group because I'm such a huge advocate for it. We'll see if it works out next week, um, because I do really, truly believe that now, that's how I got all my podcasts was through networking as well. Um, so, and that's such a great way to market your your business, your service, your industry, your product, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, great way. This says sponsor a local event, which we talked about, create a parade flow. I love that. So it says, you know, sometimes they have St. Patrick's Day parades, 4th of July parades, Memorial Day parades. So depending on what type of, um, how big of a community you're in, I love that idea. That would be so fun, sponsoring a parade flow. Um, advertising with your local chamber of commerce. I'm a huge chamber of commerce advocate. Yes, Cindy is too. Um, you get a lot of benefits being a Chamber of Commerce member, um, offering local deals or coupons, posting in community billboards, direct mail flyers we said about. Um, so there's just, there's so many sponsoring a local sports team. That's what we said. Refer a friend promotions are huge as well. So those are great also. So um, particularly done with you, that could work really well. A refer a friend program, you could do a whole like promotion around that. Um, so that would, could be really huge, um, set up shop at a local festival. There's so many different things that you can do and all you, you just have to really Google them and, and, um, they're on there. There's a million of them on there. So now I just, since we have very, very, a little bit of time, I did want to just, I found a couple of, um, I found a couple of ads that are for, for very small companies, very small businesses. 
And I just wanted to show you guys there. These are all social media ads. This is what they did on social media. They're small. So I want to show you um, a couple of them. This is Olipop. So um, small businesses, Olipop is a health drink business, taps into social proof by featuring people trying their product for the first time and loving it. You guys can see my um, screen, right? Okay. So I just, this is, um, this is what they did by themselves on social media. So I'm sitting, I'm, I'm walking up the street, right? And I get this, this can. He said, you want to try this? Like it's called Olipop. So for the very first time, I'm going to open this up. This is my very first take. Ready? If you gave it to me without telling me it was good for me, I wouldn't know. It tastes like it's not. It just makes you want to do it, which is... Oh, yeah. It's really good. So, Olipop, try it. So that one I loved because did you see how easy it was? Like literally you could take your phone, put a backdrop up and go ask people on the street what they're, you know, if you had that as a product, like it cost them nothing to do that. And that was just super creative um, to do that. And I'm going to show you guys one more um, before, because I know it's 1256. So I wanted to show you really quickly one more. Um, this is a, oh, I'll share my screen real quick. This is a wizard pin. So another way to build confidence is by featuring unboxing videos. So this is wizard pin. They just show an unboxing video and they made this into an ad. I'm blown away by the quality of these pins. They're better than I ever could have thought. And customers love them and so do I. Their customer service was great as well. I went through probably a dozen proofs to make sure they were perfect in the way I envisioned. I would definitely order again. And legitimately, all it is, is someone unpacking these, I mean, that's all it is. And I just, I don't know, I just thought it was like, I don't know. It just, it's so bright. It, you know, you have a statement up there and how easy is that? Like to do something like that. I mean, that's so, so simple. So there really are like, there's really a lot of ways that we can be creative just by using our phone. And that's clearly what those people did. They just use their phones. And the next thing you know, they're like making these amazing videos. Um, so there's a lot of those examples out there. That's big in the direct sales world, Cindy said. Yeah, that is. Very, I see a lot of those. And that was, but that was a small business too. Yeah, small direct sales, small business. Yep. So, and that's so easy to do. Like, it's so easy. Um, so anyways, that's advertising. We've covered a ton. We've got like a minute left. Does anyone have any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns? No, I just want to say, Cindy, you killed it with that um, advertisement. So I'm really excited. And if you remember, just put that um, group in the comments so others who are watching this later can see that as well. And maybe we'll want to join. I will when I find it. And Perfect. Cross fingers that all the work, all those ads convert. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's the main thing. But even if just, you know, you get your return on investment back, that's the most important thing. Yeah. That's the most important thing. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And we will see you next Tuesday. Same time, same place. Have a great day. Thanks, guys.